hey guys this time we'll be talking about two minerals zinc and manganese and their importance um their sources um their functions and what leads to the deficiency and what does the deficiency lead to so if you talk about zinc there is about 2 g of zinc in the adult human body the 2 g is a lot if you consider the composition but there are many that, that are found like 20 g in the body so it's not that huge anyways this is it all that important what is important is the normal serum level of zinc in the human body of an adult and that is 100 microgram per deciliter and the units are important because sometimes they give certain quantities in milligram and you might get confused and there's a hell of a lot of a difference between milligram and microgram anyways this is important so where in the body is the largest accumulation of zinc that would be in the prostate gland right so these are some important things um then we can talk about basically the sources of zinc various kinds of grains various kinds of beans right so these are for now we're talking about the vegetable sources nuts again so what have we talked about right now we have talked about three vegetable or more like more accurately three plant sources of zinc number 1 grains number 2 we have talked about beans and number 3 we have talked about nuts these are the plant sources if you talk about the animal sources we have good old meat and something a bit different because these kind of you know nuts and grains and beans and meat literally most vitamins or the majority of them and most minerals are going to have these but this is one is a more distinct so also more easier to remember shellfish and these are the animal sources and animal sources tend to be absorbed better there is better absorption of meat and shellfish in the duodenum that is the absorption of zinc from animal sources such as from meat and shellfish is better right let's not talk about the functions the functions of zinc zinc is an essential component of many enzymes essential component you have to remember this essential component of many enzymes and they've given a lot of the examples in such in mushtaq etc but you got to remember at least two i think lactate dehydrogenase now you are aware of this this has to do with anaerobic respiration when we get lactate as a metabolite right and then we have carbonic anhydrase and this has to do with the formation of carbonic acid in the rbcs via the co2 and h2 so these are kind of like related sort of this has to do with the cellular respiration and this has to do with the well, technically it's also respiration it's more like breathing so i it's easy for me to remember this i thought maybe you would feel the same another thing is that another enzyme it's sort of an important component of is superoxide dismutase and this is really important because this one partakes is an, is an antioxidant right and partakes in the destruction the elimination of free radicals so because it is an essential component of superoxide superoxide dismutase which is an antioxidant zinc itself may be considered as an antioxidant so we have talked about these two really important factors and then it has something to do with vitamin a serum levels
basically uh, it keeps the serum levels up how does it do that well zinc is essential for the formation of what retinol binding proteins so we've talked about retinol binding proteins we talked about there being intracellular retinol binding proteins and extracellular so the extracellular ones are the ones that sort of there's needed for when liver is in the liver we have vitamin a stored in the form of retinyl esters and when they have to be transported they're sort of like broken up into retinol and free fatty acids so for retinol to sort of be in, going to the serum and then maybe elsewhere from over there it needs to be bound with retinol binding proteins or produced by the liver and something known as transthyretin so if in the serum it needs to be complexed with these if it wants to exist in the serum other important uses of zinc can be in nucleic acid degradation interesting right and in wound healing which is why if there is an excess of there is a deficiency of zinc wound healing is impaired right in addition to this we have a protein known as gustin which is in the saliva right and this protein gustin is very important for taste sensation and this protein is containing zinc so if there is deficiency of zinc there is loss of taste sensation because these gustin proteins will not be produced this is important so zinc supplements are given to mothers right mothers who are expecting mothers and it is believed that these supplements have a role in increasing the mean birth weight birth weight right and it is believed that if a expecting mother is deficient in zinc it can lead to congenital abnormalities um children and infants are given zinc during acute diarrhea it is it is believed to help out so it, zinc has to do with dermatolo dermatological so it's important for proper dermatology proper git functioning pop, proper reproductive functioning in fact it has to do with proper spermatogenesis and proper embryonic development right so this is kind of important all of this is kind of important to be honest so if there is a deficiency of zinc there are dermatological consequences like alopecia which is hair fall and then we have dermatitis there is kind of na the name is self explanatory and skin lesions there is impaired spermatogenesis talk about the consequences of deficiencies there is there are psychiatric consequences like dementia other than dementia what do we have we have people get depression there is also retarded growth leading to dwarfism hypogonadism
we have anemia being a consequence right so what about when we have too much zinc how can that happen well people who do welding work they inhale zinc oxide fumes that is one way and what are the salient features of zinc toxicity nausea fever interestingly excessive salivation there are GIT related problems mainly gastric ulcers um, there is also pancreatitis and pulmonary fibrosis <laughs> this is a bit more serious to a bit less serious there is coughing so there is we also have this zinc metabolic disorder and inherited disorder that is acro dermatitis Acrodermatitis enterohepatica in this basically disorder zinc there is a defect in zinc absorption right and so there is inflammation what are the symptoms there is inflammation and it, where is the inflammation the inflammation is around the mouth the fingers and the nose that's it for zinc hopefully you found this to be helpful thank you